Okay, conceptual questions. All right, so let us begin. Number one, what is a model? Give two examples of the nature of light. So a model is just something that helps um, explain processes or understand processes that are hard to visualize, hard to see. And then as far as uh, examples of natures of the nature of light, you could have like a particle model that would show you, you know, how you know light particles move versus a, uh, or you could have a wave model, and that's just kind of like how light moves in waves. Okay. All right. Number two. What is a quantum? So that's a weird word, quantum, right? So you always think a small thing. So a quantum is a packaged amount, usually like the tiniest unit of a packaged amount. So you could say in examples could be like one molecule, one single gold ring, one dozen donuts, if that's the packaged amount, like a dozen donuts is packaged, right? So that is a quantum. Usually it's very, very small. All right, what is a quantum of light? So that is like one single packaged unit of light, right? So that one is actually going to be, I guess I could write this stuff down, photon. That one's going to be a photon, right? All right, so let's look at number four. What is Planck's constant, and how does it relate to the frequency of energy, frequency and energy of a quantum of light? So in other words, how does it relate to a photon? So Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 meters squared per kilogram second. All right. So then the question is, ooh, too much light. Let's bring it down. Let's bring those uh, photons down a little bit. There we go. All right, the question is... Um, how does that relate to frequency and energy of a quantum of light? So it's the ratio between frequency and energy. So ratio between frequency and energy. Awesome. Next question, which has more energy per photon, red light or blue light? Well, red is typically, red has typically a higher wavelength. Blue typically has, well, it, it does, not typically. Blue has a higher frequency. Therefore, blue light has more energy per photon, right? All right, number six. What is the photoelectric effect? Okay, cool. So, like, what is this whole unit about? So it's, it's about the emission of electrons from a photosensitive metal when high frequency light is shined on it. And you'll see this in the lab that you're going to do when you're done with the unit. But when you, let's say you have a piece of metal, right? And it's got electrons on it. It's going to be my flashlight. So when you shine a high frequency light at this piece of metal uh, it makes some of the electrons leave it they leave the metal right um, now something to note again it has to be high frequency light so usually if you shine something like a red light not they're not really gonna leave or not many whereas if you, as you get closer to the high frequency side like blue violet um, then they'll start leaving, right? So again, the emission of spectrons, the leaving, the emission of electrons, so the leaving of electrons from a photosensitive metal when high frequency light is shined on it, right? Okay, number seven. Why does blue light eject electrons from a certain photosensitive, photosensitive surface, whereas red light has no effect on the surface? Okay, so we kind of answered this. Blue light has a higher frequency than red light. And that's why, because it all depends on the frequency, right? All right, number eight. Will bright blue light eject more electrons than dim light of the same frequency? 
So we'll bright blue light eject more electrons than dim light of the same frequency. Um, so that the answer is yes. And it's yes because there's more photons in the bright light, right? So bright light has more photons. So in the example of a video, hopefully you watched at the beginning, where um, you have a window, and let's say it has a bunch of windows on it, right? Think of the frequency as the density of the thing you're throwing at it. So it could be like something low frequency, like a very like a foam ball, or it could be something high frequency, like a rock, right? Um, bright blue light is like throwing a bunch of rocks, rather than dim light, which is like throwing like maybe like one rock, right? So when there's when the light is brighter, it has more photons, right? All right, so does the photoelectric effect support the particle model or the wave model? So this is going to be the particle model because we're dealing with like electrons moving off and particles, right? All right, so there we go. Let's move on. Already on the back page. Already on the back page the back of this conceptual model. All right, so 10a, do particles of matter have wave properties? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And one thing to think about is if, especially if you've you know played any kind of game, most particles of matter will give off certain waves, um, like infrared. A lot of them give off infrared waves or, or different waves like that. So, yes, absolutely. B, who was the first physicist to give a convincing answer to this question? You got to take it to the max. My boy, Max. Max Planck. Bam. Done. 11, as the speed of a particle decreases, does its associating wavelength increase or decrease? So, as the speed of a particle decreases its wavelength will also decrease. All right, 12. Uh, does the diffraction of an electron beam support the particle model or the wave model of electrons? So the diffraction of a particle beam, the diffraction of an electron beam, um, that's the wave model. Bam. So that's it. Um, you know, again, make sure you're reading through the reading material. That'll help for sure. If there's anything you don't understand, either rewatch video slash like check the reading material slash ask me and I'll help you out. All right. Good job, guys.